Hello and welcome to this video on acetylization. Now acetylization is a reaction in which we form what is known as an acetyl or ketyl. Let's understand what is an acetyl and a ketyl. An acetyl looks something like this. It is a geminal diether. There is a hydrogen attached to the carbon and one of the other groups on the carbon could be an alkyl or an alkyl group or it could even be an H. And there are two ether groups on that same carbon. It's a geminal diether. If it has an H, at least one of the H on the carbon, we call it an acetyl. If on the carbon there is no H, that means both these um, R and R prime could be alkyl groups or aryl groups, then we call this entire thing as a ketyl. So we're going to learn how we're going to convert uh, a given organic compound, let's say an aldehyde or a ketone, into an acetyl or a ketyl. So an acetyl is a geminal diether formed from the reaction of an aldehyde and alcohol. And similarly, a ketyl is formed when we react a ketone with an alcohol. Now, the reaction between the alcohol and the carbonyl compound is called a nucleophilic addition reaction. So let's understand what is that. Now, let us assume that we have an aldehyde or a ketone. It's a carbonyl compound. Now let us assume that I'm going to add A plus B minus, a compound AB where A is plus and B is minus, and we get CO, and the O is attached to A, and B is attached to carbon. So this is an addition reaction. So that takes care of the addition part. Now why do we call it a nucleophilic addition? We call it a nucleophilic addition because though you will find that on the carbon I'm getting the nucleophile added as well as the electrophile added on the O. So we have both the nucleophile and the electrophile getting added. But we still call it a nucleophilic addition because the rate determining step, the RDS, the rate determining step is the addition of the nucleophile. So it is when the nucleophile attacks the carbon which is the RDS, and therefore we call it a nucleophilic addition. If the addition of the electrophile had been the rate determining step, we would call it electrophilic addition, the kind of reaction that you generally see in the case of alkenes. So that is the nucleophilic addition part. Now, acetylization is acid catalyzed, and water gets eliminated in the process. And the acetyl and the ketals cannot form under basic medium. And that you'll understand when we see the mechanism part. The reaction can be driven to the acetyl or the ketal form by removing water, which is formed in the reaction. So we have an aldehyde or a ketone. We have two different or same groups, R groups on the carbon. And we add two mole of an alcohol for every mole of the aldehyde or a ketone. The medium is dry seal and we get the formation of an acetyl or a ketyl along with the formation of water and this is an equilibrium reaction and if you keep removing water the reaction goes forward if you keep adding water the reaction goes backward so let's look at the mechanism part now in the mechanism part <clears throat> we have the aldehyde or a ketone first reacting with h plus remember it's a reversible reaction the lone pair on the oxygen reacts with the H+. Plus. There are, of course, two lone pairs, but I'm only showing one of them because only one is relevant right now. The lone pair picks up the, pro the proton, the H+, plus, and we get the protonated O. And as you can see, it has a resonating structure, and the positive is on carbon. So the actual hybrid, the actual uh, uh, intermediate would be the hybrid of these two. So carbon will have some amount of positive charge. In the next step, an alcohol molecule attacks this carbon with its lone pair. And we get the next intermediate. And this intermediate loses a proton. And we get 
a product like this. So here we got one OH on the carbon and one ether group on it. We call this as a hemiacetal. So hemiacetal is one of the products formed in this reaction. But then the hemiacetal doesn't stop there. It goes on further since we have got two mole of alcohol. So again, in the next step, the H plus is picked up. And if the H plus is picked up by this O, then the reaction goes back because it's reversible. But if this O picks it up, the OH part, then you get this part, intermediate. And then water is released. And we get a carbocation. Another molecule of alcohol attacks this carbocation. We get this and releases proton and we get the acetyl or ketone. So if we use only one mole of an alcohol for every mole of aldehyde ketone, we're going to stop at the hemiacetyl stage. And in case we are able to get uh, if, we, if we use two mole of an alcohol for every mole of aldehyde or ketone, we'll end up getting the acetyl or ketyl. Now, the reverse reaction takes place by adding water in the same acidic medium. And acetyls and ketyls are unstable in acidic medium because of this reason. So if you have an acetyl or a ketyl and you add H+, and since water will generally be the solvent, you'll end up getting the aldehyde or ketone. Whereas the acetals are stable in basic medium. So in a basic medium, they remain as it is. They're stable there. And this entire process is what we call as acetylization. Thank you.